After Fat Boys, then Merry Go Straight. Uh, where did that straight. name come from? It's, it's, Don't it's ask. An interesting <laughs> name. <laughs> Don't ask. It sounds like a play on words on merry-go-round. <laughs> it is. <laughs> right. Literally. Um, it was It was mainly the drummer, Dan, his idea. I'm, you know, I, I don't... Obviously, we all had an influence and, and a say, and we said yes. I don't know why, but we said yes. <laughs> um, yeah, merry-go-straight's not great, is it? And we spelt it in a very strange way. It was M-E-R-I-G-O. S T R A T E S in capitals. Merry go straight. Yeah, it was all capitals and one word, no space, and it was just really odd. Um, we were really desperately looking for a band name, and everyone started throwing out these stupid ideas, and we were like, no. And then someone said Merry Go Round, and we left. And he goes, what about Merry Go Straight? We were disturbed, and we're like, yeah, all right. <laughs> but yeah, uh, great band, I thought. Terrible band name. Yeah, Merry Go Straight was uh, was fun. Um, Becky, obviously, brilliant, absolutely amazing, great musician. Uh, Jasper, fantastic musician. I think I have to say that, do don't I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then me and James as well from Fat Boys, our writing and stuff. Dan had a good say in, in what we did as well, and musically, even you know, being a drummer. A lot of drummers don't. Mm. They like to just sit back and, you know, do their thing. But Dan had a great say in, in what we did. Um, but yeah, America Straits was great. I thought we wrote some really good songs. Uh, there were some real crackers, even though we only wrote about five songs. Um, I thought we, we, we did write some really good songs. Um, again, it's one of the situations where I thought we should have gigged more in the time we had together. The only problem with, with America Straits, I think, was you had. Uh, in not a particularly bad one, it was just a problem then. I think it was Becky, great songwriter, um, brilliant songwriter. Shane, great songwriter. Me and James, obviously songwriters as well. And putting, trying to put those three together and to write a song is quite hard. And you know, we said to Becky, you know, you do your own stuff if you want to sort of step back and just play. And you know, we'll tell you to play, that's fine. But at the end of the day, you can't sort of starve people of what they're good at. You know, she's a great songwriter and it was just difficult I think uh, trying to get all those three sort of working together well mm -hmm. and then trying to produce something out of it that sort of flowed I think that was quite difficult. Was there a mix of styles as well because you've got quite a lot of guitar based music there and actually Becky comes from a keyboard based. Exactly yeah she's keyboard based uh, obviously got different influences from us too Jasper, obviously, more acoustic guitar based, almost a folky sort of style. Me and James came from guitar, uh, rock, alternative based backgrounds. Yeah, it was it was difficult trying to merge those three together. You know, we wanted to sort of from Fat Boys, we 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 knew me and James knew we wanted to do something different than Fat Boys, but yeah, it, and we wrote some great songs in Merry Go Straight, but it was definitely difficult to sort of try and get that to flow properly. I think when it did work, it was great because of the influence of different, I mean, tracks like How It Started. Yeah, I th that's a great song, track, yeah. It? It's it's very surreal song. It's, I, yeah, I really, really do like that song. It's one of the songs, again, I can I could go back and listen to. Uh, you know, we it's such a shame because we had, we had all these songs recorded and they got lost uh, in, in the studio. They just got wiped one day by accident which is a real shame because I wish we'd had a recording of that particular song, a professional recording, because, you know, uh, I really, really like that song. I really did, very proud of that. And I think everyone in the band was and still is, you know, it's a great song. But yeah, I wasn't doing anything musically at all. And then Jasper said, you want to be in my band? And I said, yeah, OK. And then Jasper and the company have other starts. It's crazy. When it first started, um, Jasper and the company, was it, sound, it really did come across as if you were just having a bit of... Fun. Yes, it was. That's that was the outlook completely. That was the idea. He said, you know, I'm the songwriter, and I, all I want you to do is play a ukulele because you know, he knows I can play ukulele. And we'll have to touch on that before you move yeah. on. Yeah, that. that really shocked me when I saw you with the <laughs> ukulele because I'd always seen you with uh, sort of like the guitar and yeah. wanted to be sort of like the indie guitar hero. Yeah, and then all of a sudden you come out with the ukulele. What? Where did that come from? Literally, seventeen years old. 
<laughs> it's really bad, you know. This like, makes me sound very disrespectful to the ukulele, what I'm about to say. But I walked past Music 47, saw this flying V pink ukulele, laughed a lot, went in, and bought it just as a complete joke. <laughs> Took it home, tried to tune the four, first four strings to like, to, the, to like a bass almost, and thought, this is really crap. <laughs> Stuck it down. <laughs> a year later, uh, day doing nothing, picked it up, looked on how to play it, and haven't put it down since. It was, it was, it started off as a complete hobby. Um, it started off properly getting into ukulele. I, I learned to play it, liked it, didn't really do a lot with it. And then I was in college at Worcester Tech. And uh, one of my tutors said, I really want to start a ukulele orchestra for, for college and stuff. And I was like, oh, I'll be in it. I'll play ukulele. And I can play it in a traditional sense. Um, but with Jasper, it's sort of this new era of folk and pop that he's sort of doing and I play it, you know, with a bit of fun and something different and uh yeah, there's there's not a lot of, you know, picking involved. I just you know, it's more of a it's more of a second percussion instrument in the in the band, you know, next to drums, you know. I play it in a very percussive way, a very rhythmic way. It's it's not there for sounding pretty, it's there for, you know, added something so I like to think I make it my own I've made it my own especially in Jasper uh, yeah but I would like to do something eventually with it like solo um, playing more traditional ukulele there's a record label there from Belper and but you know I think their area covers you know, Derby and Nottingham and what were they called? they're called Sound of Records okay. and they said, we want to sign you, and we were like, all right, okay, and with these things, you know, you just sort of, it's tongue in cheek, you know, you don't really take it seriously, you think it's never gonna, nothing's ever gonna surface from it, and then, March last year, it all became official, and we, we signed. And it did change things a little bit, it kind of hit, hit me in the face, like, oh, it's getting a bit real now. And we've got to record an album now, and we're going to release singles now. And we've got to do videos now. And yeah, in that sense, it made it a bit more real. But still, it, it's I've never seen it as like, oh, God, I've got to go and do this. And it's still great. In the middle of Staffordshire, in the middle of nowhere, literally, for a week solid, we spent there. Waking up at 7 a.m., going to bed at like 3 a.m. Did that solid, recorded the whole album in a week, and that was great, you know. Wouldn't be able to do that without being signed. So it's got its great bones. Did a beat sessions, which is BBC uh, kind of introducing, and it was played throughout Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire, Lincolnshire, and Leicestershire. Um, so great, great exposure for it. Um, I think that's why it's accumulated so many views. It was just BBC Radio Nottingham went in to do an interview and play a couple of songs unplugged without a drummer as well. So to have that many views when we're not even doing it full band, like uh, our songs full band, we're just doing them completely stripped down almost. And it's great, you know, it's great to see those views going up. It's great news. What so. would you like to happen? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you know, I'd like to be touring and playing to sell out shows. Uh, I think for me, I'd love to be on the road all the time. I think that's definitely my sort of goal. That would be my goal, you know. I don't want, you know, mega, mega fame stardom. I just want to, you know, be a musician professionally where I can earn, you know, a, a living off it and enjoy myself, I guess. I think that's what everybody wants at the end of the day. Some people want, you know, mega, mega stardom, but I just want to be earning a living, I guess. Getting by with music, I think it's hard to do. Yeah, everyone says Worcester's got a great music scene, but the Worcester Music Festival for me is like the pinnacle. It really does show. What what Musta has to offer, and obviously you know we've got some great talent, really really good talent in Musta, and such a sort of wide variety of music, and uh, yeah I think the Worcester Music Festival kind of really showcases just how much talent we have. Robinson, you know, um, yeah from Robinson to sort of 
this wicked tongue and you know I think everyone appreciates each other as well I don't I don't really there's no pretense in Worcester there's no there's no pretentious attitudes where it's like yeah, like you know there's one sort of style of music and the rest of the band sort of don't get any you know exposure and I think everyone's very respectful of each other in Worcester and, and bands you know because you know, everyone's got their own music taste but when you're in a local band you can't like I think you should support what's going on regardless of your taste you should just respect the fact that there's great music being made out there in, in your local scene um, but I think yeah I think Worcester's really good for that I've, I, you know no offence to Cheltenham because I, I now live in Cheltenham um, I find the music scene there to be very pretentious and there's not a lot of room for a lot of up and coming bands, there's not a lot of open arms like welcoming, it's not a very welcoming place to go and play music, a lot of people know what they like and that's it, which I don't like and Worcester thank God is nothing like that. I was reading an article the other day that said that um, if you make it in the music industry they always try and persuade you that, you're, that you come from London even if you come from Newcastle. Yeah, because they reckon that plays better internationally. <coughs> would, you, would you give into that and say that you're a Londoner? I wouldn't. No, <laughs> I think it's weird. I don't really understand why they do it because, uh, you know, not to be controversial to, to peace or anything, but peace label has been from Birmingham and they're not from Birmingham. They're from Worcester. I think it's just because you know the label, you know, where, you know find out where you're from and think, you yeah, know, where's that? No one doesn't know where that is. If we say you're from there, you're more likely to get. Uh, bigger fan base or whatever but I, I think that's I think it's odd I really do I, I, I would never sort of play into that if there was sort of you know you have to do this or then I you know I'd consider it but I find it really odd I don't know why people it's a London have to Paris New York thing isn't yeah, it? yeah 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 <laughs> you know yeah like you know American bands say you're from New York when you know you're in, you live in the sticks or something mm. but you know you're from New York City it's like really odd I've never really got it I'm just trying to imagine you with a cockney accent. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, no thank you.